Hey there. So, you know how frustrating it can be when you get banned or suspended on platforms like Facebook, Google, TikTok, Snapchat, or even on online marketplaces like eBay or Amazon, right? Whether you're running ads, managing multiple accounts, or just trying to grow your business, the risk of getting flagged can really set you back. But what if I told you there's a way to protect your accounts and business from all that? You can stay under the radar, run multiple accounts, and keep everything smooth and safe. Sounds good, right? Let me introduce you to Auntie Detect browsers. These are super handy tools that mask your online fingerprint, so no one can track you. In this video, we're going to compare two popular Anti Detect browser services, Multi-Login and Go-Login. Let's start by exploring Go-Login and the features it offers to help hide your main local system. When you first open the dashboard, you'll see the option to choose your operating system. Go-Login supports Windows 10, Windows 11, Mac OS, Linux, and Android. It's important to select the operating system that matches your real environment to reduce detection risks. Next is the proxy feature. GoLogin has a built-in proxy manager. However, they currently only offer data center proxies, which are often reused and may be flagged. Luckily, you can add your own custom proxies or even choose to run a profile without a proxy. For time zone settings, you have two options. You can automatically fill the time zone based on your external IP or manually select one from the list of available country-based time zones. In the extensions section, you can easily add browser extensions to your profile. Just click Add Extension and choose from the list. Very useful for customizing your setup. GoLogin also lets you manage bookmarks and cookies. You can preload cookies into your profile to make it appear as if the browser has a history of activity, which helps make your profile look more realistic. Next is the WebRTC setting. WebRTC allows real-time browser communication. GoLogin gives you the option to disable it or simulate it based on your proxy's IP. For geolocation, you can choose to block it entirely, allow websites to access it, or automatically fill it based on your external IP address. In the advanced section, you can customize your user agent, screen resolution, browser language, platform, and even CPU threads. CPU threads refer to how many simultaneous tasks your processor can handle. Websites often detect this using browser fingerprinting, so customizing it is a key feature. Finally, there's cookie management, which controls how the browser stores small data files from websites. Once everything is set up, simply click Create Profile, and your browser profile is ready to use. Now that we've covered GoLogin, let's move on and take a look at MultiLogin to compare their features. This is where I create groups of profiles, each one related to a specific platform. Let's walk through creating a profile step-by-step -step and show you how to set up an Auntie Detect profile. From here, write the name of the platform you are creating the profile for. This will be used to manage your account correctly when you have created multi-profiles. For example, let's say we want to create a profile for a Google Ads account. From the operating system options, I will select Windows since that is my primary operating system. Always choose the same operating system as the one you are currently using on your device. The goal is to make the browser fingerprint appear as natural and realistic as possible. If you select an operating system that doesn't match your actual one, websites and detection systems may spot the mismatch between your real device and the browser fingerprint. This increases the chances of your account being flagged, blocked, or even banned. So always make sure to choose the same operating system as your current system to keep your profile realistic, natural, and undetectable. Once you've selected the correct operating system and confirmed it matches your PC, you're ready for the next step. The next step is to choose how you want to store your browser profile. Here, you'll see two options, cloud and local. If you pick cloud, your profile will be saved online, which means you can access it from any device just by logging into your account. It's perfect if you plan to work from different places or want to secure a backup. If you choose local, your profile stays only on your computer. It loads faster, but if something happens to your device, you could lose your profiles unless you back them up manually. In my case, I'll choose cloud because I prefer having my profiles saved online. It's safer and more convenient if I ever switch devices or work from different locations. The next step is to select the browser type you want to use for your profile. Here you have two options. Mimic or Stealth Fox. Mimic is based on Chromium, which is the same engine behind Google Chrome. It's perfect if you want your profile to look and behave like a Chrome user. Fast, smooth, and very widely supported. Stealth Fox, on the other hand, is based on Firefox. It's a great choice if you want your profile to act more like a Firefox browser, 
which can sometimes feel more natural depending on the websites you're visiting. In my case, I'll choose Stealth Fox because I prefer using a Firefox-based profile. It's reliable, less common than Chrome, and sometimes it helps avoid certain detections depending on the site. Now, moving to the next step, the proxy feature. One of the great things about multi-login is their integrated proxy feature. It gives you the possibility to choose from their pool of fresh, high-quality residential proxies directly inside the platform. If you already have proxy bandwidth available in your account, you can use it directly. No need to add anything manually. But if you have your own private proxy, you can simply click on the custom section and add your proxy details manually, like the host, port, username, and password. In my case, I already have bandwidth balance in my account, so I'll use Multi-Login's built-in proxy service. For example, I'll choose a residential proxy from the United States. Then for the region, I'll select California, and for the city, I'll pick Beaumont. I also want to keep the IP address for as long as possible, so I'll enable that option. All right, now that we've set up the proxy, the next thing we need to do is head to the location section. This is where we can tweak a few important details to make sure our profile looks as natural as possible. So first up, we have browser languages. You've got a few options here, masked, custom, or real. If you choose masked, it hides your real browser language, so websites won't know what language you're actually using. Custom lets you pick any language you want, so you can choose something specific if you need to. And real, that just uses your actual browser language. Typically, it's better to let multi-login do its thing and automatically pick the best language based on your proxy, but it's really up to you. Next, let's talk about time zone. Again, you have three choices, masked, custom, or real. Masked hides your real time zone. Custom lets you manually set it, and real uses the time zone based on your proxy's external IP. To keep things looking natural, it's a good idea to match your time zone with where your proxy is located. It just makes everything flow more smoothly and seems more believable. Now, onto WebRTC. This one's important for privacy. Masked hides your real IP inside WebRTC leaks. Custom lets you set a specific WebRTC IP, and Real will expose your actual IP, which we don't want if we're using a proxy. So, for security and stealth, you'll want to go with Mast here. Moving on, we have Geolocation Access. This one's simple. You can choose to either have it prompt you for location permission, or just allow it automatically. If you're aiming for more control over your privacy, you might want to keep it as prompt. But if you don't mind sharing your location with websites, then allow works fine. Lastly, there's geolocation data. You can either mask it, custom, or go real again. Masked hides your actual location. Custom lets you pick a location manually, and real uses your real geolocation. Just like with the other settings, you want to make sure your geolocation matches your proxy's location to keep things consistent. And that's it for the location section. Now let's dive into the advanced section. This is where you get to play around with some of the finer details of your profile. It's all about making sure that your setup looks as natural and as stealthy as possible. Let's break it down. First up is screen resolution. You've got a few choices here, masked, custom, or real. If you choose masked, it hides your actual screen resolution and gives you a fake one. Custom lets you pick exactly what you want. And if you go with real, it'll just use your actual screen resolution. Normally, the system will pick the best fitting resolution for you when you create the profile, so you don't have to worry too much about this one. Next, we've got media devices. Again, there's masked, custom, or real. If you go with masked, it hides your real media devices so websites won't know what you're using. If you choose real, it shows your actual devices. Personally, I recommend keeping it masked for more privacy, but if you want to look like you're using specific devices, you can go custom. Now let's talk about WebGL and WebGPU metadata. You've got the option to mask it custom or leave it real. If you choose masked, it hides all that metadata. If you choose real, it'll use your actual WebGL and WebGPU data. To stay on the safe side, I'd say you should mask it so it's not easy for websites to track you. Moving on to WGL graphics. Here, you can either go with noise or real. If you pick noise, it'll add random noise to your WebGL graphics, making you harder to track. Real will use your actual graphics. Again, adding noise is a good way to protect yourself from tracking, so I'd recommend that. Then there's canvas graphics. You can choose between noise or real here as well. Noise will mess with your canvas fingerprint, making it harder for websites to identify you, while real will use your actual canvas fingerprint. I definitely recommend going with noise for some extra protection. Next up is audio context. You can either mask it or keep it real. 
Masking it adds some randomization, making it tougher for websites to track your real setup. Keeping it real will just use your actual audio context, which is easier for websites to detect. So masking it is probably the safer route. Now let's talk about the navigator. Here you can mask your real navigator data, set it custom, or leave it real. Masking it hides your actual navigator data, which is useful if you don't want websites to know what kind of browser or system you're using. Custom lets you set it manually, but I think masked is the way to go for privacy. Then there's port scan protection. You can choose between masked, custom, or real here as well. If you mask it, it hides your real port scan details. Custom lets you set up your own port scan behavior, and real shows the actual details. For security reasons, I'd stick with masked here. Finally, font data. You can either mask it or leave it real. If you mask it, it hides your actual font data, which is another way to prevent fingerprinting. Real will show your actual font data. Again, I'd go with masked here for extra privacy. And that's it. Those are all the advanced options. They let you fine tune everything to make your profile look as natural and undetectable as possible. You can get as stealthy as you want with these settings and I'd recommend playing around with them to find the best mix for your needs. All right, now that we've gone through all the settings step by step, all you need to do is click on Create Profile. Once you've done that, your browser profile is ready to go. Just click on Launch, and voila, your profile is all set and ready to use. After thoroughly exploring both GoLogin and MultiLogin, I've come to a clear conclusion. While GoLogin has some useful features like proxy management, time zone settings, and cookie handling, MultiLogin offers a more comprehensive suite of tools designed to provide top-notch anonymity, flexibility, and performance. Its advanced fingerprint management, diverse proxy options, and the ability to manage multiple browser profiles at once give it a significant edge in ensuring complete privacy and minimizing the risk of detection. Based on my personal experience, I will be sticking with multi-login. The range of features it offers for managing profiles, handling proxies, and simulating browser fingerprints is unmatched. For anyone looking for a more professional, secure, and customizable anti-detect browser service, multi-login is definitely the better choice.